Hi, this is Dr. Shraddha Shah. I'm an assistant professor at Hindu College and I'm going to be presenting to you a lecture on bioethics. This module is going to be done in two parts. The first part of the lecture is going to consist of the scope of bioethics and what exactly is the study of bioethics. And in the second part, we're going to look at some key concepts which are going to allow us to study the subject of bioethics. Now, what is bioethics? That is the first question that uh, concerns us. Bioethics, as you would know, is a field of subfield of ethics, more specifically of applied ethics. As a discipline, it started emerging sometime around the 1960s and took a distinctive shape. The first time the term bioethics was used, it was coined by Van Rensselaer Potter. According to Rensselaer Potter, it was defined as a study of biology combined with diverse humanistic knowledge, forging a science that sets a system of medical and environmental priorities for acceptable survival. Now, what does this mean? Definition by Potter highlights the ecological aspect of bioethics. It is argued to be a field of interdisciplinary studies. However, this idea of an ecological aspect of bioethics is something that has come to be redefined in terms of what the contemporary definition is. Bioethics primarily came to refer to ethical issues that emerge with regards to medical care and biomedical sciences. Ethical requirements not just with medical procedure but also its prerequisites, its implementation, aftercare, end-of-life decisions, distribution of resources in terms of healthcare, physical as well as mental, ethical codes for biomedical research, its social and legal implications, all of it comes under the purview of bioethics. Now, these are things which were not part of the traditional understanding of what medical ethics was. And bioethics marks a distinctive change in the way in which we understand medical ethics. And it is also distinct from what Potter argued bioethics to be. And from this definition that we've just looked at, one can also understand that bioethics is a dynamic interdisciplinary field. It has areas ranging right from biology, philosophy, law, distributive justice, economics, policy making, etc. And all these are distinctive fields which contribute to the study of bioethics. Now, before we get into more details of what bioethics consists of, uh, let us consider a few examples. These examples that I've chosen to discuss are particularly those which have affected all of us in the last year and a half or so. I'm talking about the COVID pandemic. Now, the first case that I've taken is uh, in the context of Italy last year, around March 2020. Uh, I'm going to be reading out some uh, headlines that uh, were encountered by all of us. The first one being, Italian doctors on coronavirus frontline face tough calls on whom to save. The heart-wrenching choice of who lives and dies. Italy prioritizes younger patients for treatment in a warlike triage to tackle coronavirus. Now, these are news items which all of us would have encountered. But this idea of making choices in terms of who to save and who to let go of are important choices which bioethics is concerned with. This idea of a triage, uh, which essentially consists of uh, dividing the population into three groups. One, which is not going to survive even if medication is provided to them. The second group, which is going to survive only if medication is provided to them. And the third group, which is going to survive irrespective of whether medicine is going to be provided to them or not. These choices and these decisions have huge implications. And even within the second group, which is uh, where uh, medication can be provided and the group will survive, even within that, there may be further choices which need to be taken into account in order to decide who can live and who can die. And these are tough choices. And bioethics is a discipline which concerns itself with such choices. Uh, the second scenario that I've chosen is in the context of uh, vaccine development, something again which has affected all of us. So I'm going to be reading out a couple of newspaper entries. And these are newspaper entries which all of us would have encountered in the past year or so and concern all of us. Uh, coronavirus, we were in the dark, say Bhopal vaccine volunteers. Nobody said it's a trial, a new COVID vaccine controversy in Bhopal. In Bhopal, COVID-19 vaccine trial participants say they were misled. This is an issue which takes into account issues of consent, issues of information disclosure and something which concerns itself with research. This is also something which all of us are directly concerned with. What are the conditions under which 
this research can take place what are the conditions under which people uh, should be made aware of what kind of research they are participating in this is also an aspect of bioethics which needs our consideration some of the questions that these issues raise up are who is best qualified to make these decisions are they just ethicists are they doctors are they researchers are these decisions to be made by politicians who is best qualified to decide what are the theories that we use as a basis to decide what to do in such scenarios uh, in ethics we look at theories such as utilitarianism deontology care ethics but what theories are going to be best suitable to make these decisions are these decisions only going to be made in terms of uh, case studies or do we need some other mid level principles in terms of say each person is an end in themselves how are we going to decide how these decisions are going to be made why do we need to make these decisions like i pointed out that bioethics as a study has emerged only in the last 40 50 years as a distinctive discipline what are the conditions under which this discipline has emerged and how do we decide how to make these decisions and why do we make these decisions all of this concerns the study of bioethics now let us move to a consideration of how bioethics as a separate discipline has emerged since the 1970s one of the very important factors with regards to this is the changing philosophical ideas and methods prior to the 60s and 70s a large part of western philosophy was concerned with analytic philosophy metaethics and generally an analysis of the terms that were useful for ethical analysis now this was something uh, which was largely concerned with an abstract view of philosophy and this was questioned uh, in the years following the second world war so the way in which philosophical ideas themselves came to change in the context of uh, the prevailing uh, discipline is something which acts as a significant contributor to the emergence of bioethics uh, the fields of analytic philosophy and metaethics were criticized uh, by people who engaged in questions of uh, applied ethics and they argued that we need more application oriented aspects of philosophy to deal with contemporary issues that affect our lives and this is something which was aided by the change in the socio political climate as well now the post world war years were marked by tumultuous uh, political social changes and i'm speaking of this particularly in the context of america and europe because these were the study of bioethics as a distinctive discipline itself emerges in this context uh obviously the question arises that what happens to the developing world and i will take that up when we discuss justice and uh access to healthcare and uh some of the conceptual changes that accompany this sort of uh development however as far as the discipline itself is concerned uh we do have to consider its specificity which is in the context of the developed western world now post world war 2 was marked by the civil rights movement in america it was marked by uh, the uh, anti vietnam war protests and there was a rise of liberal individualism issues such as autonomy of the patient uh, confidentiality issues regarding privacy disclosure a difference between uh, the scientific world view as well as what the lay person would want all these contributed in some ways to the emergence of bioethics another very very significant aspect of how bioethics emerges is in terms of the development of science and technology now a lot of changes that have come in uh, in terms of bioethics are marked by availability of certain kinds of technologies uh, certain issues that we are dealing with uh, would not even have emerged if we didn't have certain technologies uh, to give you an example uh, the development of artificial respirators uh, which necessitate that we ask end of life questions consider the scenario that in an earlier case where uh, we could not extend the life of someone who is in a comatose situation or you know if we didn't have uh, ventilators uh, these decisions of uh, when to pull the plug or when to uh, how long should we continue with uh, uh, you know uh, extending the life of someone would not even have arisen but because we have artificial respirators and we have ventilators by way of which uh, lives of people can be extended we are required to make these decisions further if we want to consider some other examples issues such as transplants 
Again, these were not possible uh, prior to the development of technologies and science. And how are we to make these decisions? And what are the implications of these decisions on the larger social political sphere are very, very significant. Another important aspect is that uh, with the emergence of uh, increasing science and technology, invasive procedures, which could have marked uh, side effects on a patient, also came to be witnessed. Now, clearly with these issues, also alongside came issues of agency and issues of autonomy. How is it that a patient is going to decide whether a certain procedure is suitable for them or not. There is a certain kind of distinction that we see between an expert and a lay person, where the expert cannot be the only uh, determining factor of what procedures are to be carried out. At the end of the day, it is on your body that these procedures are going to be carried out. Therefore, the patient in accepting these procedures must have a say in what these processes are. Now, Another thing that we need to consider with regards to the emergence of bioethics is its distinction from medical ethics. Now, medical ethics is an age old discipline. Uh, we can trace it right back up to uh, the Greek philosophers in terms of uh, its discussion. Uh, one of the best known examples of this is the Hippocratic Oath, uh, which I'm sure all of you would be aware of. Now, the Hippocratic Oath is something which is very, very significant uh, because it has had its implications in terms of uh, you know, a certain kind of development in contemporary ethics as well. However, bioethics as a discipline is something which moves much ahead of uh, a traditional understanding of medical ethics. It is something which is necessarily interdisciplinary in its character. Uh, bioethics not just addresses issues with regards to patient and physician relations, but also in terms of research and its ethical contours, in terms of policy making and the larger socio-economic and political impact, as well as the legal impact of issues with regards to this domain. Now, if we consider medical ethics, the general principles that medical ethics encompasses are beneficence, non-maleficence, respect for patient autonomy, justice, confidentiality. All of these I'll address in the second part of the lecture. However, these principles are not enough to deal with the fast evolving field of bioethics. We need further principles and further concepts in order to understand bioethics but, uh, better, particularly if we look at areas of reproductive research or genetic uh, research, organ transplantation and other allied technologies. All of these incorporate changes which are unprecedented and things that have, we haven't encountered yet. Uh, for instance, uh, if you've recently considered issues of designer babies, how is it that we are going to regulate this in terms of ethics is a big question. Should we allow something like this to happen or not? All of these cannot be restricted to the principles that medical ethics uh, encompassed. We need further analysis and understanding of these ideas and research in order to make our decisions. And the point is also this, that there, is, there are going to be further advancements in the field of biomedical research. And these are something which we haven't encountered yet. And therefore, we need principles and concepts which can take account of these unprecedented scenarios. Now, another thing that we need to consider in terms of bioethics is its relationship with other fields. I've already pointed out that bioethics is an interdisciplinary field, but there are still areas that need to be better considered and incorporated in the advancing domain of bioethics. The first thing that we can consider is its relationship with different cultures and religion. Uh, use of animal products and testing is a very, very big issue. Uh, religions have different ideas of what is an acceptable uh, medicine or what is not. This is also significant when we consider alternative medicines, which is again something which has not been taken fully into account in terms of a study of bioethics, but definitely is something which requires our attention. Another very important issue which comes in terms of uh, cultures and religions is uh, abortion and reproductive technologies. In the West, it has definitely been observed that abortion has been a very, very contentious issue, particularly with regards to American politics. It has even been an issue in terms of uh, the political climate, in terms of what uh, party is going to support it or what party is not going to support this. And this becomes a key issue in terms of electoral politics then. Uh, another issue which comes in terms of cultures is what kind of values do we choose? 
Now, biomedicine, in terms of its very, very basic principles, is concerned with the longevity of life and removal of disease. But other values, such as human dignity, can be something uh, which can counter or challenge this principle. How are we to accommodate these differences is something which needs to be considered in terms of bioethics. Another very, very significant aspect is in terms of gender studies. Now, feminist critiques have been very significant in not only highlighting the underlying assumptions of bioethics, but also in pointing out some of the ways in which this field is limited and has had a certain kind of patriarchal base. Division of labor between doctors and nursing is a very, very significant issue there. Doctors, in terms of their rationality and precision, are generally seen to be a male or a masculine domain, whereas nursing, in terms of its preponderance of care, is generally seen as a feminine domain. Feminists have criticized such binaries and such dichotomies in the discipline. Another very, very significant aspect is the conception of a normal human body. Uh, feminists have highlighted that women have generally been kept out of the domain of research. In fact, the feminine body has been reduced to its reproductive function and it hasn't been taken into account when research has been carried out. And there are n number of uh, studies which highlight such discrepancies. Uh, this is also significant when we are considering psychiatry and uh, the consideration of what is normal human behavior. And particularly when we are considering the mental states that accompany uh, various uh, changes that a female body encounters, there has been a pathological view of these mental states, which otherwise might be perfectly normal to the general cycle of a woman's body. All of these areas require consideration when we are conceiving of a domain of bioethics. And particularly now when we're looking at the third wave of feminism, uh, the very idea of gender in itself is getting challenged in terms of the sex and gender dichotomy. How do we take into account gender fluidity in terms of gender studies and bioethics is also a significant issue. Law is another field where bioethics has a very dynamic relationship. There are times where we see that law informs what bioethics should consist of. Likewise, we see that the unprecedented situations that bioethics brings in is where we need to take into account the legal framework. This is something which we can better understand with examples. For instance, uh, when we look at genetic research, I've already pointed out examples in terms of what kind of uh, research would we permit and what kind of research should we not permit is something which is also a question within the legal framework. When we consider cases such as euthanasia, uh, we have to account whether these decisions were made in a completely transparent capacity or not. Now, all of these questions cannot be addressed so easily. Uh, they're generally very, very murky. We have principles, we have laws in terms of deciding whether something is acceptable or not. But we clearly know that life is not as simple and sometimes a clear application of law is not permissible in a situation. And this is something that we generally need to take into account when we are considering the relationship between law and bioethics. Another very, very significant aspect, and this takes me back to Van Rensselaer Porter's definition, is ecology, distribution and access to resources at a global level. Porter's definition argued for a sustainable and acceptable survival. With the increase in uh, biomedical research and our ability to extend the lifespan of individuals, uh, we have to ask questions of what is acceptable survival. Can we unendingly extend lifespan of individuals, especially when we have a very, very sharp dichotomy between the developed and the developing world in terms of access to healthcare? Uh, there are statistics which point out that the majority of research which is carried out in the world in terms of biomedical research is devoted to the diseases that emerge in the developed world, whereas very little is devoted to that of the developing world. This dichotomy is something that definitely needs to be taken into account. And I'd already pointed this out to you while we were discussing the very nature and uh, scope of the discipline. These are things which increasingly require our consideration. Now, let me recapitulate what we've done in this uh, lecture. 
we've looked at a definition of bioethics we've looked at some of the historical uh, conditions under which this discipline emerged and we have also looked at its distinction from medical ethics uh, another very significant aspect that we have discussed is its relationship with various other domains that require further consideration in terms of this fast emerging field thank you i will see you in the next lecture